What has she taught me about love? You weather the journey. So that's, that's definitely one thing she's taught me about love because for me it was very fairy tale based. I think probably the biggest thing is that love is not perfect and love is not always enough. My name is Stephanie Sanders. Hi, my name is Hungani Ndlovu and I'm in a relationship with Stephanie Sanders. And we've been together almost four years now. Wow, the first time we met was the 4th of December 2015. That time I was just going to audition for Scandal because she's the casting director there. It came in and I was like, oh, okay, it's cool, it's cute. I just like being in relationships, so I was done. I didn't think anything, I just thought he was cute, but I didn't think anything of it because obviously he's like four years younger than me. Anyway, he auditioned, he did amazing, he was exceptional as well. And yeah, that was that. And then he got the role, which was great. Needless to say, I gave him his first job. I, to be honest, was very reserved when I got to the workplace because it was my first TV gig and I wasn't trying to step on anybody's toes or ruin anything. And I honestly felt like she was like, like part of like the big dogs so i was like i can't be now you know trying things with someone that got me the job and stuff like that eventually she invited me to her office yes she had an office and i thought like it was work related stuff so i was quite nervous when i got to the office um and then she was just like so let's let's chat like tell me about yourself that was like when i was interested because i realized that he's so much more mature than his age i was like never met a 22 year old who thinks like this and who has vision and ambition. We spoke about Jesus, we spoke about past relationships, like we like immediately just went deep and it was just very, like it was very easy and very weird because it was also something I wasn't trying to do, but it just like happened. And I was honestly just like, madly blown away because I was just like there's something about when he speaks and when he says what he wants to accomplish you kind of go yeah this guy's gonna do all of this it's not just talk it was definitely new territory for me I had never met someone like her um, and I still haven't met someone like her like you know sometimes with people you can say um like so and so are alike or so and so like can group together like i honestly can't say that for stephanie and i think that's probably why i was so nervous because someone so awesome and cool and kind and loving and respectful like was drawn towards me who is just like hey i'm actually trying to get some work <laughs> Listen, I shot my shot. Is it called shot my shot, shoot your shot, whatever the thing is called. I slid into his DMs and look at me now. I'm so happy. So, that's what I did. I sent him a DM. He was um, on a market theatre production. And she's like, hey, I was wondering if I could get an autograph from one of the actors on the show. Like, pff, you don't know anybody. Like, not, not, okay, so... To the actors that were there on the day, not to say that you're not known, but she really didn't know any of the actors that were there, aside from myself. And then yes, I went to go watch the show, and then from there, yeah, we started chatting quite a bit. And then the play continued, um, and then she came again, but this time she didn't come to watch the show. She just came to see me after the show. So I knew that this day something has to happen, like you can't just come to see me after the show and nothing happens. So we sat in her car, we spoke, we spoke. The windows are mystified from all this conversation and nothing happening. She kept putting on like, I, don't, I guess it was like lip gloss or like lip ice or something. And I was like, Bunny, you've watched enough movies to know that this is a sign, so do something about it. Ah, uh, 
if you knew someone who could not read signs but anyway i was like i it's getting late now gotta go so then i was just like okay cool uh gave her a hug went to my car and in my head i'm just like like this is it like that it was either like make or break and this is break like forget it so i got into my car then i told her that we'll like convoy out of town because it was in Newtown. I mean, just by, there's like a hotel just before you like going towards the Mandela Bridge. So I pulled off to the side um, and she followed, put the hazards on. Then I got out my car, asked her to get out of her car. I'm like, oh, what's happening? My guy decides to be pushing people against car doors here and starts kissing me like, it was quite romantic, it was a bit dangerous, but it was lovely. That was probably the best kiss we've ever had. Well, everything you imagined was it to be. Everything at all. Just fireworks. Fireworks, fireworks. under the such car lights of taxi hooters and... <laughs> <laughs> now we are here, four years later. What has she taught me about love? You weather the journey, so that's... That's definitely one thing she's told me about love because for me it was very fairy tale based and every time there was pain or anything that seemed like it wasn't love I would kind of pull away and want to escape and she's she's taught me that you no you you keep going because that's that's the journey mm. She's awesome. Ngani has taught me that love is not perfect and love is not always enough. And I know that's like a massively hectic statement, but Ngani's kind of taught me that no, you can love each other, but if you're not willing to work on the relationship, if you're not willing to trust one another, if you're not willing to put in the work, then I, you can even keep your love for yourself so i think the biggest thing is probably that love alone does not sustain a relationship you have to have a number of things i, can see, I told you i'm gonna find you love i, to I told you don't, don't don't worry i'm on it i'm on it let me just break myself now hi oh hi i'm here to make you <coughs> no man i can find you love i can find you love all right where do you guys need me I'm just on the okay oh hi i didn't see you there my name is Devon Banza. I'm the guy that you know, but you don't know from defining. And I'm here to tell you about something that will change your life. Well, your love life. Are you single single? Oh shit, guys. Do you cry or suffer well when you watch an episode of Defining Love? I love you, Oh. Aww. Oh shit, got done on. Well, the team and I have just what you're looking for. And no, it's not Corobella for your crush, but it's the all-new defining show that matches you with the love of your life, whether you know them or not. Trust me. I'd love to ask you to spend the rest of your life with me. Hectic. <laughs> if you want my help, click on the link in the description box and I could help you find the love of your life. Or just someone to dance with that groove. Either way, I've got you. Let's get matched. At which moment did you realize you were in love? Why must your voice now do this? Just answer the question. <laughs> there wasn't really a moment. Ooh. I didn't have a moment where I woke up, I'm like, oh, I'm in love. It was something I think that happened gradually, the more I got to know you, little by little, and then boom, I was in love. But I can't isolate a moment because I think it happened. It's still happening. I'm still falling in love with you. Anyway. Did our age gap bother you when you started dating? Yeah. Yo. That's for me to answer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, no. It didn't bother me. Yeah. No, it didn't. Full stop. Okay. So why did it bother you? I think it... Let me clarify that. Yes, please. Yes, it didn't bother me as much as when we met, and this is one of the things I was saying, like, <clears throat> with being with you, that I kind of have grown from. I used to be very much about what people think, so it wasn't so much it bothered me, but I knew that 
it bothered some people especially like family members because they were just like parents like didn't you want to get married now now so what's happening so i think that now that i've grown in the sense that i'm very much less about what people think it's fine if you could go back to the first time we met what advice would you give yourself regarding being in a relationship with me to do if we could go back to the first time we met what relationship advice would i give myself what advice would you give yourself about being in a relationship with you <clears throat> it's a tough one um 30 minutes later i think this is where you go for an ad break we'll be back shortly to trust you more trust myself sooner i think be more open with my feelings sooner because a lot of great came from when i opened myself fully up to you as opposed to holding back on a lot of things i think if i yeah i would do that sooner rather than later hey miguel the past year is even to you i think for me it would be to be more flexible to like thinking differently because i was very set in my ways so i think definitely being more flexible about how things are done and yeah not having to ask who's going to be there how long are we spending the eight day eight day eight day eight day so yeah i think yeah okay let's see what we got was it ch- oh was it challenging living with me was or is well i guess let's make it is is it challenging living with me sometimes yeah elaborate for five weeks <coughs> Hungani, if he's cleaning the patio, yo, he can clean the patio for maybe two hours. By that time, I've already cleaned the whole house. Now I can't even like, you know, rope you into another activity because it untook you the whole day to do one thing like wash the dishes. Hungani will do dishes with me background music like it's therapeutic. Because it is. And it then, is. like, if this is the fork, he's like taking the thing. Because you like, gotta clean. This. That's fine. We, we're not just going yeah, over. That's fine. You gotta get in but between. But now it eliminates me asking you to do anything else for the evening. Well, then we gotta we gotta split it up. You know, we gotta have split a roster. L- listen to this so roster. So Monday is uh, the dishes. Let Tuesday. me tell you. Let me. Out, if we have to split it up, right? He's not. He's gonna take the whole week to do what i would have done in like one day because we need because for you it's not therapeutic of course it's not therapeutic why is it therapeutic to do dishes because it's time that you're there by yourself and it's a repetitive motion and you get to think and process things okay. you're taking something that's dirty and making it clean okay. sit, I'd it's like a process in. of healing. therapeutic is me sitting on sitting on on the tube in the swimming pool with like a glass of champagne that's terrible. well i that's can't do that because hello i'm not trying to look like jimon honsu i'm already I don't mind. dark yeah, you don't, but Asha. <laughs> Very little things. He's actually a nice person to live with. He's not the most difficult. He thinks he and there. I know you have a list of things, so let me throw the question your way. Mm, I would say it's not a lot of things, but <laughs> maybe just like allowing my ideas to like be okay, you know? So in the house where we live, I, I only, I was given one room to decorate. <laughs> whoa, 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 cut. There's a TV hey, room, whoa, whoa, there's whoa, whoa, a dining room, there's off, a bedroom, there's lying. a guest room, there's a patio. No, let's, I got let me the put office, this, the let smallest me, room Let me in put the this house. in context, let me put this in context. So we moved, right? We moved, firstly, Hunga, actually, great. Open. Mm. Ungani mm. is a bit of a hoarder. He's very sentimental. It's hold on, hold on. He's like sentimental about stuff. So if he was a kid and he drank out of a certain mug, he wants to keep that mug. Of if he's course. got this pair of shoes that remind him of this. So as a result, because he lived alone for he had ample cupboard space. He's got things from grade eight, grade one clothes still. Imagine this thing, it's for his kids. But yes. anyway. Because so it's not I give worn things out away. And it's Wait, special. so let me finish. So then we move into the new space, and it's an apartment, no cupboard space whatsoever. So we have to compromise, okay? So we take half of his things, half of my stuff, and then we move into our new place now, which is much bigger. 
right? But we're trying to build like slowly, but so we just took all the things from the previous place and we put it there. But now there's an echo in the house because there ain't no furniture and nor do we necessarily have money to buy the furniture right now. So I'm like, listen, let's go and get this couch from this one, this from my parent, this from this, this from this. He's like this because it's not his deco, what, 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 what. Then when I go get it and I make it look like something, now all of a sudden he's like, oh, that looks nice. Yeah, that actually looked nice. Of course I'm going to say it looks nice. It's in the house. I'm not trying to make you feel some type of way. So it doesn't look nice? No, it looks lovely. Let me just... <clears throat> Lucky you got a room. I'm what is your like favorite like intimate gold memory gold. of us? Hey, babe, what's your favorite intimate memory of us? Not this. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I would say Mauritius. Ooh. Do, you, do you want to give them some context? We went to Mauritius. I would say moments <coughs> when there's no like music in the background, <coughs> which is like a common thing in the house, but like there's no music in the background, there's no TV, and like we just happen to talk and usually the talk will start with like work related stuff and then all of a sudden it's like about us and mm. things that we've either learned from one another or appreciate yeah um, i think that's like my favorite part paper boops <laughs> dear hungs first word ish you know, I'm not the best when it comes to expressing how I feel, especially in front of others. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for accepting me with all my flaws. Thank you for allowing me to be fully who I am and making no apologies for them. I know it hasn't always been the easiest because we're such different people. Thank you for opening my eyes to the world of possibilities and pushing me. Damn it, you push me so hard that it's actually annoying. But nonetheless, your drive and ambition inspires me so much. Thank you for your realness. Even when you're at your weakest, you don't ever hide your tears or breakdowns. You, full stop, are, full stop, everything. Real, vulnerable, and gentle. And that is the best type of man I know. In fact, you're one of a kind. You break every stereotype and I love it. I love you to infinity and forevermore. To Mrs. Dot. Um, and you know what this means. Um, <laughs> so there's a poem here. And the poem goes as follows. It's not your conversation that keeps me entertained, but rather the way you look at me that makes me feel sustained. The curve of your lips, the curl of your hair, tis all the little things that make me stop and stare. So every time you ask me why I'm staring, that's why. My promise to you is to honor and love you the best way I possibly can. Thank you for dealing with my annoying ass and loving me, even when my hair isn't kept up to date. Thank you for helping me grow. I love who I'm becoming and I believe God put us together for a very specific reason and I believe we're on the right path. One day at a time, moment to moment. Nakoranza. Another poem. Oh wow. Hey guys, we're gonna have a staring competition. Please press the screen. The outro. Oh, I wanted to do the outro. You wanted to do the outro. Three, two, one. I'm blinking. I'm blinking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Defining Love with myself, Stephanie Sandhouse, and Hungarian Lover. Yeah. Anyway, 
I am on Instagram at Miss underscore Sandows, Twitter at S Sandows, and Facebook Stephanie Sandows. So follow me. And I am on all socials at Ungani, H U N G A N I, Ndrovo without an H. Don't forget to comment. Yeah. Like. Definitely give a thumbs up. And um, don't forget to subscribe somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Still there by the decorations. Ah, it's okay. Hi, hi, hi. Why you are lying to the people? Mm-mm. Didn't you nearly get that? Which one? Suede looking emerald blue, whatever, green couch. And it would work so nice in the sun. Oh, okay, but did I have objections to it? 